Okay, hey guys, Skip here, and I'm bringing you another video. This one is on Napoleon to the war, as you probably worked out from the this video. Um, this video I'm doing two of because I filmed the live footage, which you're seeing right now. I'm narrating over it. Uh, so the, the narration isn't live, but the footage is. So it's a live commentary, except the commentary is not live, just the footage is. Okay, I'm just going to call it live commentary on the video just because it makes more sense that way. Um, I will also be releasing a second video um, with the replay that I've got. Um, that won't be live. The, the reason I'm doing both is because if you, if you compare my videos where I've done the live commentary and where I've done replays, the replays are more professional. Um, they're specially done in specific or in a specific order, purposely highlight the key parts of the battle, having done the battle. I have freedom to move around the battlefield, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. Um, and I don't have to worry about strategy, so the commentary is better. Um, but one of the benefits of doing a live commentary is whilst the commentary is poorer, because I, I can't, the commentary may not necessarily be in sync with the video, because I'm narrating over it right now, um, instead of, you know, being in game and doing it at the same time. So I don't actually have control over the camera right now, this is me filming. The reason I'm doing this is it allows you to see my strategy. Um, so this battle is on Ligny, which I actually made, I actually rated as the worst map on Napoleon Total War in my top five worst maps video. So quite controversial. Um, but I'm on it anyway because I couldn't find any decent servers. Sorry about that, I just had to quickly um, cut the narration due to uh, an interruption. We'll, we'll put it that way. Anyway, as I was saying, so I'm on a terrible map. The reason it's terrible, if you watch top 5 videos you'll get a bigger explanation. But the deployment zones, as you may be able to see, I'm not sure, are kind of messed up due to all the rivers and the buildings causing us to not be able to get a decent deployment zone in. And one side, the side that I'm on, ironically, is more beneficial. I happen to be in the deployment zone that isn't necessarily that beneficial for my side because I'm still blocked off, but the others have plenty of space right in the middle of the map. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not that great this map, but regardless, it makes video interesting because I'm usually playing on basic maps like grassy flatlands or pyramids. So now you, you, you know, at least you do get a mix. Um, Yeah, I, oh, I'll, I'll go through the, the nations and also the units whilst I'm waiting for the thing to end. As you see, it's almost ended. I'm playing as Great Britain, as is my ally on the far right. Uh, the reason I'm playing as Britain is because whilst they have expensive units, they're good quality, and space doesn't matter so much on larger battles, so 3v3, 3v3s, 4v4s. This is a 3v3. Rules were no more than... For artillery, there you weren't allowed um, unicorns or rockets or anything, which the Russian player did break, but it doesn't matter so much. Uh, you're not allowed more than five skirmishes, and I think that was about it. Um, our other ally went Prussia, who also have good quality, so we've got a good quality side. Our opponents are the Russians who have more quantity, so that person's obviously got a lot of units. Uh, he's got a lot of cavalry, a lot of infantry, which you'll see in a minute. If you can see in the distance and you recognise the signs, you'll see he's got a lot of cavalry, a lot of infantry. Um, and there's the Ottomans who have irregulars, which is interesting. I don't usually play them because they're not so familiar with the units, uh, but they, they can certainly pack a punch. They've got a lot of decent howitzers, as you'll see from him pounding me right now at the beginning. And also, Austria is the third player on the opposing team. Kind of like uh, Russia, they have more quantity than quality, although the Hungarian Fusiliers are pretty decent compared to the Austrian-German Fusiliers, which are quite poor. But as you can see, I'm already getting pounded by artillery right from the start, from, Ot from the Ottoman Empire, which as you can see from my zooming, I'm <laughs> quite surprised by the distance. Uh, I don't know why he starts aiming at me, but anyway. I, I decided to form two lines, uh, one reserve, one in front with my rifles in, uh, in front of that. Uh, both my cavalry uh, and my general behind. I've got um, three riflemen, 
one cold stream guard, one foot guard, six, no, eight actually, I upped it up to eight basic foot line infantry, two dragoons and one general staff. Um, I saw this nice chunk of land, I think it was a kind of floodplain between the two rivers that I decided to deploy on, and I was going to get a general gist of what was happening in the battle, what my opponents were doing before I launched any sort of attack. As you can see, I've got the bridges quite secure on that left flank. My ally Prussia in the centre wasn't very content to move into the town. I kept, as you'll see, I'll keep typing to him saying, could you please move the vanguard forward, because then that uh, puts pressure on the centre, the allies flood uh, units and troops into the centre which then opens the flanks up for myself and my British ally on the far side. Um, you won't see so much of them in this battle because I don't have control of the camera and I'm busy focusing on myself but right now I am typing to my ally to... Um, well I, I think I'm typing about the artillery, I can't actually see from this screen. Um, Sony Vegas isn't showing it in high res at the moment. Uh, I'm thinking I'm talking about the artillery firing at me, and then I start typing to my Prussian ally to start moving forward. My British ally, as you can see, is really distributing his troops quite far around. He's pinning down Austria in a fight over that river, as you can see. Prussia is, defense is playing very defensively on that hill. I keep urging him to move, and I am, of course, waiting for the opportunity to move myself. I see that Russia is also playing defensive, which is helpful. Um, the Ottomans and the Austrians, however, are being aggressive. And I'm constantly being bombarded, which is really annoying. This is where I start complaining about the bombardment in the chat. And then I tell Prussia to move. Now, th this battle... In, in each of my online battles, I try to highlight something that is important in the battle that had a huge detrimental effect so that the viewers can, of course, uh, improve their performance in game. So, for example, in the Pyramid one I did recently, uh, it was all about deployment and just keeping your formation, keeping your cool and wrapping around your opponent. Also, the usage of cavalry in order to force your enemy into a square to wrap around them. This one, this one, is, firstly, it demonstrates why you want quantity over quality in larger battles where you've got less space. Secondly, it demonstrates teamwork. And thirdly, it demonstrates why the person on the flanks, in or well, the people on either flank on the larger battles have such an important role that the rest of the team is dependent on. Because in online battles, people in the centre have very limited room. They're just going to be the vanguard. They need to put pressure and hold on as long as they can, whereas the people on the flanks are the ones who need to break through, wrap around, and both teams are going to be trying that. So it's so important to win those flanks. Now I told Prussia to move forward. Um, in order to engage the Ottomans to put pressure on them so that I could uh, happily go across this river here in front of me and attack the Russians. My general is already dead, already dead. Uh, artillery from the Ottomans blew him up. Uh, but Prussia didn't quite understand what I was saying. For some reason I sent cavalry over on this left flank, which did help, but it was odd. I mean, as you can see, I moved my front line forward as well as the rifles. My reserve line is still with the cavalry in general. And I'm waiting for the right opportunity to cross. I'm kind of waiting for Prussia to do something. As you can see, they are doing, but not what I wanted. And that's what I'm currently urging right now in the chat. Because I'm getting bombarded quite heavily, as you can see. And there's nothing I can do with that. I, don't, I didn't bring any artillery, because... I don't tend to, just because I'm, I tend to play, I'm very mobile in my battles, I tend to play quite aggressively, bring the fight to the enemy, uh, allows more flexibility, allows the momentum to carry your troops, and artillery really hinders that, it kind of locks you in a position, which I don't, I don't appreciate. All right, the Ottomans have started shooting at me, so I move my units further towards the left so that they're not getting shot and I send my rifles to engage. The British uh, rifles are the best in the game which is why I was confident of being able to pin them down there. I then typed to Prussia, who has crossed the bridge with his cavalry, to charge into the rifles with the cavalry that he crossed in order to try and hurry them up, which he does. So yeah, I'm just hurrying up my rifles, getting into better positions. Just getting Prussia to move his uh, cavalry right now.
Unfortunately, I didn't realize that there was a hidden line of infantry unit that formed square. But I take the opportunity of him... Well, I take the opportunity of the Ottomans being engaged by the Prussians, and I can see that Russia clearly wasn't moving, to send the line of infantry over the bridge, which is the most dangerous part, because crossing the bridge you can easily be surrounded and picked off. Um, it was secure at that moment, so I took the chance. I moved my entire army across the bridge. My general's dead, but I moved both the front and reserve lines and my cavalry behind them, keeping the formation. I kept the rifles on that side to pin down the Ottomans in case the Prussians' cavalry fell, so that I could still get across safely. I got my front line to run quickly and then to establish a defensive line so that I can just march slowly the rest of my army because I don't exactly want to exhaust them this early in the battle. My rifles, I get into, well, I keep moving them around slightly, but I, they stay there, pretty much, uh, pinning down the Ottomans. And I put stakes down just because they provide a sort of cover when you've got stakes. As you see, Prussia is moving into the centre. You won't see much of Prussia or Britain in this one. If you want to see them, then watch my other video, which I'll upload afterwards. Um, which is the replay, this is the live. But Prussia is starting to go into the centre, which is what I wanted, the vanguard. Which is good, because then that draws the Ottomans' attention, allows me to focus on Russia. And now that I'm across the river, and I've got space, I can quite easily take out Russia. Um, if I, of course, get the right momentum and space which is what I'm attempting now. See, my units are about to cross. It is lagging slightly. Um, connection wasn't great. Music getting tense. <laughs> because they're taking a while, I got them to run. Decided they could rest when they got there. I then decided to change into one big line instead of the reserve line and the main line. The reason for this is that um, I don't really like having uh, well, I don't really like having two lines because it means I'm not using all of my firepower. And as I say, I'm very aggressive. I like the mobility of I just stand there. Some people prefer two lines. It means you constantly got reinforcements, fresh troops. But that's not how I play. So I've just moved one big line to stretch across the entire left flank of the map with the cavalry behind in support. As you can see, I'm moving my rifles into a better position to shoot, just to keep him pinned down. My whole line is now stretching out, and I intend to take Russia in the flank. My cavalry is still there. I'll move them onto the left and right side of my line in order to support. Prussia has fully engaged the Ottomans now, which is helpful for me. It means I don't have to pin down as much. But regardless, I do. As you see, I'm putting down the stakes now to offer the, for the, to offer the cover. Now, because uh, my units are so far across the map, I once again split. I get the majority of my units to, as you can see I'm doing right now, move along this left flank and get, get Russia's right flank, which is my left flank. And then I get the rest of my units down towards this bridge to stop the Ottomans from intervening, to secure the town, and also, if necessary, to 
open another flank against the Russians. I move one cavalry unit to each side, I keep the Russians in place. That's what I'm doing right now. As you see, we started engaging lightly. He decides to start sending in his cavalry. Um, I was busy moving my units around, so I didn't get to form the first square, which is what's happening now, because I'm trying to wrap. So I didn't quite manage to get that square, but I send my dragoons into support. I do manage to get this square, as you just saw. And that square. Or I tried to get that square, it didn't work because the, they were stuck with the units next to them and I wasn't praying to a sunny dart to the side, but regardless that's right where the uh, bend in the wrap is, which means that either way there's no chance of them really winning. And I managed to get all three of these squares, despite a little glitch on that square I still managed to get it. And then the cold streams of course, against his general, for some reason he says charges general into a square of cold stream guards, which is not... Uh, the brightest thing in the book. See, the Ottomans are pinned down by uh, my rifles, my line, and then of course Prussia, who are actually we've engaging. Actually, now we've just killed their general who decides to charge into a square of Coldstream Guards for some reason, and all the cavalry has, well, either retreated or routed, so I'm able to get out of square formation. I then advance the rest of my line. As you can see now, just on the left side of this small town, so I can gauge the bulk of Russia's forces. This is the guy who broke the rules by bringing unicorns, by the way, which everyone was really upset about, so I'm hoping I did people a favor um, by, you know, getting rid of these unicorns. I've moved these uh, units on the right flank by the town who are covering the bridge further in just so that one, I can make sure the Ottomans do not cross and also to add pressure to Russia who I can then shoot into his now left flank, my right flank and uh, keep him pinned there whilst the rest of my army advances. This is going to be a very, well, at the first stage as you can see with just me advancing a basic line, it's going to be a very um, simple firefight between two big lines, so I'm hoping the quality of the British Redcoats can beat the Russian line infantry. We'll see. I, I am of course uh, adding pressure on his left flank, my right flank, with those, um, well, with those spare units I suppose. I form a square here with his final cavalry units. I say units because I'm pretty sure they're more than one alive, but I can't really tell if he's uh, got on a hidden sum somewhere. I'm considering wrapping the outside against it because it won't really help in that situation. Instead I start thinking of ways that I can break through on his flank with these other units who are currently shooting. As you can see, he's turned to face them but we completely outnumber and out experience because I've given some of my units experience and also we have higher quality than them. So here's the firefight between the Russians and the British. They get the first shots, but uh, there's quality in the British shots, so we'll see. I decide to charge my cavalry into the furthest left unit whilst they're under fire from my right flank. Furthest left unit of his, it's his left flank, my right flank, by this house here. So I charge in there, attempt to break. I decided to reorganize my units. I'm not able to get the space for a proper line, so I'm hoping to improvise. 
but I'm getting very close to his flank in an attempt to quickly break through and wrap around him. Then I start to wrap slowly on the left, on my left flank, his right flank. You really need the space and also the uh, morale advantage to do that, which why I didn't do it immediately. As you see, I'm forming another kind of line on my right flank in order to try and break through. My cavalry is really just going behind him and causing a bit of havoc. I don't intend, I don't expect to survive. My other cavalry went. I start going inside We've this house building, uh, because one, I can shoot across the river and cover in case the Ottomans try to cross the bridge, and two, it adds just some defense in order to shoot at uh, Russia because they don't have the space to form another line. Ottoman, the Ottomans do turn around and start shooting me, so I ask Prussia if uh, they could kindly keep the Ottomans pinned down, which they do attempt to do. And I start to further wrap around this house. As you can see, I've now got the space to do that because his uh, right flank, sorry, his left flank, my right, his left flank, which is on my right, uh, has started wrapping inwards and breaking. So I put pressure on there. My units are, that's really depleted, um, I charge into melee against both his artillery in order to get rid of them, which keeps people happy. After wrapping around, of course, which is what I'm doing now. Lag spike. There we go. I noticed that my rifles are still there and not doing anything now that Ottomans have moved, but I leave them there for the time being, it's got no space for them. So now I charge that depleted unit into both the artillery units, which are firing canister at me, in order to try and get rid of them. And the Ottomans and Austrians do start firing artillery at that house, but they are constantly missing due to the range and are unable to get any decent shots. Now I, now that I've moved the artillery men off of that set of artillery, I move on to the 20 pounder unicorn, which is what they're currently doing. Because I don't need to kill all their units, I make them actually to get them off the artillery temporarily. And I further wrap. The aim is to just wrap until he's completely surrounded, which I am currently successfully managing to do. At this point he is pretty much surrounded, there's just the, the one opening at the bridge where I'm allowing his troops to route. You don't want to keep them pinned in otherwise they will fight to the death, possibly. Because when they try to route they just run into you hinders your troops. Anyway, he's got one unit left. I finish off the wrap. And that is that. I see Austria is moving down to stop me from crossing that bridge, so I quickly get into... I don't intend to cross the bridge, I intend to let my troops rest because I'm very worn out, very defeated. See what's happening in the rest of the battles, so I get my units out of the house before it's blown up with the artillery. And I just form another line in order to say to Austria, I'm not moving, but if you come towards this bridge I will shoot you down. I then grab all of my riflemen and move them towards the rest of my army, in order so I can once again use them effectively, because the Ottomans have... Uh, moved position now that Russia has fallen. Our men are running, sir. Got a few units running. They are very depleted, but not to worry. Still got the, the majority of my line of infantry and that's all I need in the battle. So I've also got both elite infantry still. It's just a, a hugely costly bat battle for me because I was bombarded straight from the start. So I'm taking a lot of casualties, but I've just defeated Russia and I'm going to see what I can do about Austria and the Ottomans next. 
one of Russia's units has come back, as you can see. The rest of them are running in one big line. An orderly retreat in the opposite direction. Advance in the opposite direction, which is a retreat. Orderly. Yeah. Now, the Austrians have brought some skirmishes. Alright, I'll just... I'll show you that when I'm not looking at the rest of the battle. I've just looked at the rest of the battle. The Prussians are split. you got some army where I told them to go into the centre of the battle where the town is to engage the Ottomans, which I've done. The other half of their army is covering the British, who are... My British ally, not me. Who are seriously depleted. The Austrians have broken through. So the Austrians have broken through on the right flank, I've broken through on the left flank. And this makes the battle a kind of huge stalemate along the river. Um, so we're going to see what we can do to break it. The Prussians and the Ottomans in the centre are the ones that are going to find where the pressure is. As soon as the pressure is put, it allows me and my ally, or Austria, who seems to be on both flanks now, to make the decider. Britain was just saying that they took out the artillery, but I just reminded him that because um, they're not routed, he could just put them back on the artillery. Because he pretty much gave up his general to get that artillery, which is pointless. See, Austria is on both flanks. Quite spread out. I've still got my uh, army together. Russia's coming back. My rifles, as you can see, are just arriving. Just ignore the lag spike. Now I'll show you the issue with Austria. It's not the line infantry I'm worried about, because I don't intend to cross at the moment, because I'm just watching the rest of the battle. You know, deciding what to do. The issue is the skirmishes he's got right in the centre of the, well, centre left of the camera, on the hill across the river. There's some skirmishes that start shooting at my men. So I move my rifles up to engage. Uh, my rifles are better quality, but he does have the height advantage. Uh, you know, the terrain suits him because he's on a hill shooting down across a river and also the river kind of curves around me so I'm in a bad defensive position. Not that I intend to defend, I'm just sitting here temporarily. It's kind of like a base of operations. Just watching the Russians advance into my line of fire now they're retreating out of my line of fire. This is where I move my rifleman into a position to shoot at his line infantry. because I want to get those Austrian line infantry units out of the way. Then I see his skirmishers who are shooting at me across the river. They are under Prussian artillery fire. Anyway, I start returning fire. My other units are shooting at his line infantry. Actually, he's retreated his line of retreat away from the river, further up the hill, which does benefit me, but it's out of my rifle line of fire. So I move all of my rifles to engage his skirmishers, his Jaegers, who are across the river. He brings more rifles along the river in order to prevent me from being able to shoot him down. As you can see. Then keep having a good look at the rest of the battle. 
Prussia's really divided because they're having to support Britain on the right flank right now. I'm able to support myself uh, on the left flank, but I need some sort of pressure on the vanguard before I make any move. This is the kind of stalemate part of the battle after the skirmish phase. And all the momentum has been lost. I'm just allowing my troops to rest. Don't have much ammunition left. I move them into a kind of line with the left flank right by the uh, bridge. So that if I decide to quickly cross, all they've got to do is turn their regiments around to get across the river quickly and efficiently without the Austrians stopping me. see the houses in the town are burning from artillery fire. But the issue is, Austria sees that um, my line infantry is moving away from facing across the river. And as a result, he moves back to his original position, whilst my rifles are busy shooting at their Jaegers and my line infantry are not facing in the right direction. Which was a very good move on their part. The, the Ottomans are still under Prussian artillery fire. They are, of course, returning fire. Although part of their fire is on my rifles. I tell the Prussians to move up and engage the Ottomans in the centre to put pressure on them so I can attack the left. You see I'm quickly typing there. He agrees, but annoyingly he sends uh, some of the units from his far flank, so it takes a while for them to get there, and I've just... Uh, started receiving artillery fire, as long as a skirmish fire, and the line of tree is about to move down to the original position and shoot across the river at me. As you see, he started moving these units down. I'm still under how it's so far. So this is where the Austrians move down. I realize suddenly I'm in a really bad position because I'm now, I can only shoot in a certain direction without completely changing my position and allowing myself to be surrounded. I'm under artillery, skirmisher and line infantry fire and I'm surrounded due to the formation of the river. The ideal thing to do would be to retreat, but I take, my units also running out of ammunition, but I take a huge risk. I turn all of my line infantry to engage their line infantry because I outnumber them and I have higher quality across the river. This is a huge risk because I'm under rifle and artillery fire, so I could very easily break, and I'm surrounded. So I'm hoping I can just defeat the Austrians and quickly run across the river now when they're gone, before I'm broken. So I'm taking a huge risk by doing this. I also moved the rifles to get in the way as cannon fodder. As you can see right there. So I'm shooting across this river at the Austrian. Um, they're Hungarian fusiliers as well, so they're not as bad as the uh, German-Austrian basic fusiliers. But regardless, it's still not as good as the Redcoats, who they are currently engaging. Seeing as only half of my uh, line is firing, I get the other half to cross the river whilst uh, the enemy is engaged. Once again, another risk, because they could easily mow me down once I'm crossing. And the Austrians, sorry, not the Austrians, the Austrians are really engaging. The Ottomans are sending line infantry support down, which I ignore, because I need to get across this river quickly. I make them run, see they're currently marching. So I start running across this bridge. I've broken one of the line infantry units, which is perfect, but I'm still under a lot of pressure. I 
I get them to line up so they're going along the river even further so I can also shoot at the skirmishers and I move an additional unit behind his reserve. I line up ac across this floodplain, well, having crossed the bridge so I can uh, begin this assault on the left flank from behind. It was a huge risk going across our river, but I managed to pull it off, as you can see, with half my army, which is enough to then support the other half to cross them. Losing a few units, but nothing to worry about. I start to wrap here, on the left side. And then, now that the line infantry is broken and your skirmishers are there, I move the rest of my uh, infantry who were engaging across the bridge. I then move my rifles forward who are now just running out of ammunition to act as cannon fodder and to keep the uh, skirmishers pressed there because the enemy will probably think they're still firing. But it's all psychological. Units has used all its ammunition, sir. Now the rifles are starting to run out of ammunition, as I was saying. Rest of my infantry is crossing the river, and I'm I've now broken onto their their behind their left flank. So I'm really in a position to uh, attack. The Prussians march the rest of their units forward into the vanguard, as well as a few on the right to keep the artillery pinned, and the British, who are still left, also continue on the right to attack the Austrians who broke through at the beginning. I move one uh, less depleted unit to go and engage the Austrian infantry who have come back from routing. Though they are facing the wrong way because they were routing and I don't think my opponent has realised they've come back. The rest of my infantry I form a larger line to attack up the hill and try and get behind them whilst I've got the momentum and the advantage of uh, them engaging the Prussians elsewhere who have now engaged their attack that I asked for. Another leg spike. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. See, my, all of my rifles are out of ammunition now, and a few of my line infantry units. See, I'm, far, I'm uh, far enough up to engage his skirmishers, which I actually ignore because they're low on morale engaged by the Prussians. And I start wrapping around on this right side. I then prepare to wrap around on the left, but I see his cavalry moving in the distance and think that's probably a bad idea, I don't want to draw attention. They are winning there, so I shall leave them. My infantry is shooting their um, units that come back from routing and they're not moving and they're facing the wrong way. So I'm guessing my Austrian opponent did not know that they had come back, which is fine by me. He does a melee charge with his Hungarian fusiliers into my red coat, so I then turn units on each side into add firing support, seeing as he's no longer got any units left to uh, support against that. The Austrians there have routed, so I march uh, that unit back to the battlefield. They're broken, but they're right next to the battlefield, so they, they shouldn't come back. They're not shattered, but not, nothing to worry about. Rifles are out of ammunition, no longer firing, so I just get into kamikaze charge into the general. You know, don't need them anymore. Don't want exactly want to waste One units. Of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. So you're going to see the battle is being wrapped up. Now they are completely surrounded by our forces on top of this hill. Pretty much the battle was kind of won and lost at that river where I took that huge risk and uh, as you can see it's come through. Now there's an entire army behind them, they don't have the troops to stop me or my Prussian ally. Britain is pretty much finished our ally but Prussia and myself are uh, slowly marching up the hill. All they've got left is artillery and a couple of cavalry. The Austrian general charges into the Prussian lines.
Rest of Malami. Uh, yeah, the Austrian general has just been killed. The rest of Malami is slowly marching up the hill in a line. I'm getting to march now. I know the battle's over. No point getting this a run. My rifles, I decide to put in front. No need the kamikaze charge them now. Just make it look intimidating. We start GGing it in the chat. See, the Ottomans have started charging cavalry at me. Thankfully, they went for the one that still can form a square. So I form the square. Because you see, if units lose enough men, they don't have enough men to form a square. And thankfully, that unit did. So it was just my luck that he charged that one. And then the units that can't, who are right next to it, I got to turn and shoot in. So that finishes off that cavalry. Busy typing away in the chat. Bit of an issue with grouping here, so I just ungroup in order to reform the line. As you can see, I made my rifles in front. I'm just slowly marching towards their artillery. I don't expect to get there in time. And just making sure if my opponents fall, we do have that backup at the back with an entire British army. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just looking back at all of the bodies. They go, they just trail for miles across all these fields and floodplains where I've been fighting from my spawn all the way around the left flank onto this hill. Still being shot up by artillery. <laughs> but I'm still going to march and I'm going to start running at it. As you can see in distance, the Austrians, the Ottomans are retreating, the Prussians and a few of my fellow British are coming along. As you see, that was a weird artillery shot there. Hit the ground a few times. There we go. They all start routing. Just as my men get into position. Everyone's GGing it in the chat. And it's a Fyrick victory, so it's just me saving the replay. The stats aren't there for very long, I'd like to add. So in the replay video that I upload after this, I will go over the stats and, uh, you know, I'll make it clear um, what happened where, how many people lost, how many units, uh, how many people deployed, how many were killed, etc, etc. Not too important, but if anyone's interested, it's there. This is just me saving my army layout. Uh, you can ignore this. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're watching this far, then I credit you because it's a very long battle. And see you next time.